right, thanks very much and, and good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. If you're back from last week, then welcome back. And if you're new, then welcome to the BCS Careers Inspiration webinar series. The point of this series is to kind of introduce you to some people who've chosen to start their career in IT, have a chat with them, find out a bit about what they do in their job and what it's like and, and help you see some of the different options out there. And I think, like I said last week, you know, we've got people who've gone to university and done degrees. We've got apprentices, internships and all sorts. So as well as finding out about different jobs, you can find out about different choices for education and for, for training as well. So. Thanks uh, very much to Josh for joining us today. Josh is a, a, an apprentice working in cybersecurity at BT. So we're gonna have a chat with him for around uh, 10 or 15 minutes, and then there'll be some time for some questions at the end from the viewers. Uh, you don't have to wait till the end though to type in your questions. If you're watching now and a question comes up for you at any point, then if you go over to the right-hand side of your screen, you should see a, a little orange arrow there. And if you click that out, you should be able to see where you can type in the questions. And when it gets to the time to ask them, I'll just pick the ones that come up the most often or some of the ones that are, are very interesting. So um, first of all, I think the, the best thing to do is to start off, Josh, just finding out a little bit about what it is you do in your job. Yeah, so I work in security at BT and uh, I work specifically protecting BT. So that, that, that that's my division and that's where I work. And uh, I specifically get the chance to rotate around Protect BT and get to experience different areas of the business and, and, and the divisions throughout our security. That's great. And uh, with that in mind, can you tell us about, uh, obviously the security is quite a, a private thing, <laughs> um, but some, something that you're currently working on. So currently, obviously I just want to mention a big thing that changed for me was was moving to remote working so I'm now working from home like like the majority of us and uh, that was a big change for me and um, you know now I'm working in the training team in, in our in our BC security division so we deliver the certification training we train people on the platforms we use and we get to deliver and make sure that we reach the highest standards we can as a, as a team and, and as a business unit we and it, it's really good fun uh, to, to make sure that we're supporting the business and supporting my colleagues in the way that we can to uh, make sure that they're doing the best job they can. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you're working uh, on an apprenticeship scheme at the moment. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got into, first of all, the apprenticeships, but also into cybersecurity in particular? Yeah, so my journey started at Sixth Form. I gave it a go for a year. and I wasn't getting on with it. It didn't work very well. So I decided to take a different route. And although that's not everybody's cup of tea because it's not quite the straight line of, of, of learning that people think, I chose to go to Western College and do a BTEC instead. And by doing that, that's where it opened my eyes to cybersecurity because before going there, I wanted to be a teacher and I wanted to stand in front of a classroom, get my degree and, and uh, and do it that way. So I got into cybersecurity that way, and then over the course of the two years there, apprenticeships became quite quite prominent, and, and the opportunities there were becoming more and more available. And then I was looking around for for uh, apprentice, apprenticeships in my local area, and uh, BT was one that was hiring in my area, and I applied, and uh, that's how I got to where I am today. That's great. And can you tell us a little bit about some of the most exciting things you do? Like what makes you excited to go to work in the mornings? One of the big things about going to work for the BT security side of things is, is the fact that we're doing meaningful work from day one. The fact that I get to make an impact and do things that actually make a difference. Uh, and that's a big thing. We're not just making cups of tea in the background and, and stuff like that. We're actually doing things that make an impact not just to to myself but to my colleagues and and the rest of our customers you know and it it is it's great fun doing that but also the opportunities to network outside of the business as well like outreaching to to other apprentices going to networking events and and, and uh, getting to meet people at careers events that that may not be considering an apprenticeship to have that impact and potentially influence the future is really exciting and really good fun 
Yeah, that's brilliant. And do you have a sort of a, a set working week or set working day? Is it quite flexible? I guess, especially now, um, being at home is a little bit different. But if you think back to especially mm -hmm. when you were in the office, did you have a, a set schedule at all? So for me in particular at BT, we tend to work Monday to Friday. There are teams that are 24-7, but for myself, it's Monday to Friday. And my working pattern tends to be uh, eight till four, and and that can vary depending on business needs. Though, so it might be nine till five, but it, but I tend to just do my 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 say seven and a half hours a week, and it and it, it's nice and flexible around my lifestyle and what I need to do. So it allows you to have a real work life balance around everything I need to do. Yeah, that's great. And you said about the the work life balance. Can you tell us some of the um, hobbies or interests you have outside of work? So. I like to rug I like to referee rugby, so that that's one of my biggest hobbies outside of work, and uh, it's really good because I get to take the skills I learn in the workplace and the skills I learn on the rugby pitch and bring them together uh, in both settings. Because on a rugby pitch, you've got to communicate strongly with people and 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 get your message across in a way that not just the players see, but but the uh, spectators understand as well. And then in the workplace, you've got to communicate with colleagues to, to kind of get the work you need done and, and to, to make sure you're developing in the right way too. So the two really interlink really well. Oh, that's brilliant, thank you. And do you have any tips for people who might be interested in following a, a similar kind of path, whether, whether that be um, focusing on the apprenticeship side or the cyber side? Yeah, so, for anyone, whether it's an apprenticeship or going to uni and things like that, the biggest bit of advice I'd give is be be willing to learn, ask questions, and take opportunities. Because by doing that, whether they're online with with certain schemes like the NCSC, Cyber Discovery, or BT Skills for Tomorrow, you're able to really de develop to your future and, and, and guide your future in the way that you want to. And if you do it that way, then uh, you're going to hit where you want to go in your goals and, and your future. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And uh, what about you for careers advice? Was there anyone you took advice from or, or looked up to when you were learning? So when I was when I was taking my, my route sixth form, there was a careers advisor for me. And then my lectures at Western College really helped me along the way. And then it just came to a lot of conversations with my parents and my grandparents. And from there, we, uh, we really progressed from there. And uh, it's it's not always about just taking your first option. It's about assessing all the options you have available and whichever one's right for you, you take that one. Yeah, that's right. And and like you said earlier, something might be right for you at the time, like for, for college and then changing to an apprenticeship is, is quite, you know, quite good to recognize sometimes if you've started on a path, you don't have to pursue that all the way down. If you feel like that's not right for you, you can empower yourself to make a change. And so I think what you did there was, was really great. Yeah, um, yeah, and and what do you think about the apprenticeship versus going to uni? Do you think um, what what are some of the differences there? Do you think the the biggest difference is you're gaining work life, real life industry experience. You, you're building your professional self from day one whilst you're learning your degree, instead of getting that study element first. Kind of going well in theory in industry this is going to work properly and and you're not getting that industry experience you're just learning about the topic so you're, you're specializing straight away whereas with an apprenticeship you're getting both and, and you're getting to to really see what it's like in industry compared to what you're studying and and to be honest people learn differently so each route is different for different people and uh, you've got to take the one that's right for you at the end of the day i, I don't sit there and go an apprenticeship is is what you need to do because it may not be right for some people so it's, it's about assessing the right options for yourself and and then going for it the apprenticeship was right for me because i'm hands-on i learn by doing and and things like that so so for me the apprenticeship was there and it gives me the willingness to really go on and, and progress because i'm in a company already that's industry leading in what they do and uh, i get to do everything i want to do all in one place because bt is that big and the experiences it offers are there. Yeah, absolutely. Right, we've got some really, really good questions from the audience. So we'll try and, and get through quite a few of these. So the first one is, do you get paid a salary or is it just studying for your apprenticeship? So as an apprentice at BT, we get, we get salaried. So we get salaried and we work 37 and a half hours a week. So we are straight in as a full employee. We get the same benefits and things like that. 
and uh, and we and we get the full book and the study on uh, as, well, as well. So we get set time for that a week as well. So we, we, we get both and there's no worry about the balance of it. We, we get the time we need to do the study and perform the best we can in both roles. Yeah, excellent. We've got one question here, which I'll start to answer and then you, you'd probably do a better job Absolutely. of it than me, but is about sort of what actually really is the apprenticeship. So um, I guess I would explain it as sort of like, in, you know, you've got the choice of, of further study and, and going to uni, which is um, sort of similar to school and college where you're classroom based and you might be doing some projects uh, in a group and things like that, but you'll mainly be spending your time in sort of a lesson environment. Whereas the apprenticeship is actually day in, day out within the company, working on company projects and with, with other colleagues who work there um, and kind of learning on the job. So you have almost like a, a coursework type of portfolio to build up while you're at work. And that's the, the sort of study element of it. But it all comes through the experience that you get on the job. Josh, do you want to add anything to that? So one thing I'll add as well is there's different levels of apprenticeship. You know, there's GCSE level, so your level two is all the way up to your degree level sixes. And the advantages to that is your class, you, you, depending on the, the course you've selected, you might be on block release to a university or, or, or workshop days and things like that. So an apprenticeship, depending on the scheme and how the employer wants to support you, uh, can, can vary. But, but here at BT, it's really strong and they, they, they'll, uh, they really allow us to get involved, build our portfolios and, and do meaningful work. So it's, it's really good here. Mm. And one question here is, is it hard to get onto a, an apprenticeship? So um, as well, maybe if you could say a little bit about what the application and the interview process was like. So I would say if you're eager to learn and you're dedicated and, and, and you want to work hard and do well, then an apprenticeship will work for you. The 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 application process is not just open to your peers like applying to university is because apprenticeships are open to anybody past the school leavers age okay so so there is that more competition and, and and things like that but the application process generically tends to be you apply online you do some testing you do maybe a video interview and then you go to an assessment center and that assessment center is where you do an interview maybe a group task an individual task also and then that that compiles your your entire process to getting onto the scheme as long as you reach the minimum requirements academically to uh, to go on it hmm. Excellent. Um, and so sticking with these sort of qualification questions for a little bit, um, what sort of A-level options should you take for a career path um, like cybersecurity? So it depends. It depends massively on what interests you, because as long as you've got a STEM subject in there and a keen interest for something like cybersecurity, so maybe take computing, maths and physics, it's what I did, but it, it can become very dry if if, if you don't want to be stuck doing that. Um, then that's one option, but that's not just the only option available to you. If you want the equivalent, a BTEC in computing or or something along those lines is is just as valuable to have um, because they're both they're, they're both seen in the same light. They're equivalent. And uh, one thing the BTEC gives you is, is real hands-on practical experience and knowledge that you can apply straight away when you get into the workplace for an apprenticeship. Excellent. And we talked about, you know, having that element of study while on the job. So one question that's come up is uh, what kinds of study do you get given? Like maybe how much per week yeah. are you studying versus working? Um, yeah. And what kinds of things do you need to do? So we get 20% of our working week to study, so that's a day a week, and it can vary from, from watching tutorial videos to, to physically completing uh, little mini tasks and challenges, and even doing some further reading. Bits like that can add into our study, as well as doing other things, say, for example, uh, I got the chance to go to IBM during apprenticeship week, and, uh, and, and go and network with other people and do learning there, so, so that can really count and, and integrate into your study too. Yeah. And then more focused around the sort of workplace rather than the qualifications. Someone's asked, what's it like to work at BT? 
working at BT is really fun. Uh, it's enjoyable as well. And, and you're working in a company that has over 100,000 employees across the world, right? So you're not just experiencing UK life. You're getting to uh, communicate with people in India, in Europe, and, 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 and things like that. So it re and, in, and, and stuff. And it really gives you a sense of how big BT is. But they do really do well in in taking care of their their their, their employees. We we get amazing well-being support. We get uh, support for other things, and and it's all there, and and everything's there is superb. And the people that that are around me and 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 the business are super friendly, super kind, and you can ask any question you like, and you get the answer you want. So you'll you'll find the answer to a question if you've got it. It will be here in BT. Awesome. Um, and uh, someone wants to know what's the most difficult thing about the apprenticeship? What's the most challenging part? I, I'd, I'd probably say um, making sure that you you get the right work done at the right time. Meeting deadlines is, is you know, it's, it is a balancing game of, of, of degree and, and full time work. And, and I'm lucky that BT give me the chance to to balance it out properly. But it's it's ensuring that you you meet the right standards and make the time for what you need and and balance life because it's not all work and it's not all study. You've got to make time for your family too. So if you make time and, and balance things properly, that's the, probably the biggest thing I'd say is, is just making time for all elements of life uh, at once. Mm, absolutely. Um, and then perhaps the the last one because of time is around sort of your your day to day types of things that you do. So um, it's kind of a mixture of two questions really, which has come up. Um, what sort of things do you do uh, every day as part of your job, or what is security like versus mm -hmm. let's say coding? And then some people have said, what what tasks do you do every day? What types of things are you doing? So without giving too much away, obviously. No, that, that's fine. Um... Security differs from just coding because security is a bit of everything. You might be analyzing a security alert one day and then figuring out how uh, a piece of code has infiltrated a system or, or reverse engineering a piece of malware, right? So so depending on what area of cybersecurity you're doing, it's, it's much of a broad spectrum of, of computer science and computing in general. So you really get to experience it all in one place and you get to really understand the workings of how computers and machines communicate and how different threat actors communicate and how they'll target different areas of the business. So on a day-to-day, -day, that's what we're doing. We're doing a variety of different things all around the same thing. And, and, and whereas coding, you're, you're, you're making applications work. Uh, within security, we might be penetrating those and, and finding the vulnerabilities and exploits within them. So, so those are the differences. And uh, security really works hand in hand with uh, with other uh, technology units. So it, it's a big kind of we're, we're we're a big support unit for for organisations and uh, and the like. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Thanks very much, Josh. I think that's probably all we've got time for. So we've got through most of the questions anyway, and that was really, really, really brilliant. So thank you so much for your time. No problem. Um, for those of you who've tuned in today, uh, you'll receive uh, an email at the, well, it'll be tomorrow, um, to kind of follow up on the session just to say thanks for attending. And in there, just like there was last week, there'll be links to the next couple of sessions coming up. So we're going to keep them to Thursdays at 2.30. Obviously, coming up is half term in a couple of weeks, so we won't have one then. Um, but otherwise, Thursdays at 2.30. We're working on a web page so we can put all of the recorded sessions as well up there and you can watch them later. Uh, next week, we'll be speaking to uh, uh, someone called Adam Leon Smith, and he works in artificial intelligence and kind of tests different systems in artificial intelligence. So that will be a really interesting one to tune into if you're available. And like I said, the link will come in the email tomorrow so you can sign up for that. Uh, thank you so much, Josh, for being today's guest. And uh, I hope to see the rest of you next week. So see you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.